But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Shalom Alekim and welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Sean, your host, and uh, we are continuing our study or our thought uh, on the Feast of Trumpets, Yom Terah, uh, which, if you listen to part one, we talked about what it was and when it is. And uh, this year, um, and this is assuming that the moon is seen, the new moon is seen, but this year it should uh, fall at sundown. Uh, September 10th, which I believe is Monday night, to sundown September 11th, 2018. And uh, it's, a, you know, it's a year that I take off work every year, um, as the scriptures say, uh, which I'm going to read that to you here in just a second, but the scriptures say to, that you're not to do any servile work that day, which is like your normal, your normal stuff, you know, your normal day job. Uh, of course, you know, um, this is not, you know, it's not one of those things that I push on people and say, oh, you have to do this or you have to do that. But I'm just letting you know that I'll be uh, taking that day for myself. Let's just read about it real quick here. Leviticus chapter 23 um, says, uh, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall you have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets and a holy convocation, you shall do no servile work therein, but you shall offer an offerings made by fire unto the Lord. And so, uh, we talked uh, on the last on part one about how this is what it tells us. You know, this is what it tells us to do. We're to memorialize the blowing of the trumpet, but it doesn't really give us any more details than that about what we're actually talking about. And of course, we speculated uh, on the episode one that um, maybe it's talking about what happened uh, back in uh, Exodus chapter 19 and 20 when you have the big loud trumpet sound and the people are terrified and the commandments of God are given and that whole situation. Uh, I mean, there's many people that would agree with that. Of course, we also believe that that's the sound and that it represents uh, what we're supposed to be mindful of and waiting on to hear again. You know, the, when Messiah returns, there'll be a loud shout as of a trumpet, like a shofar. And um, so, the the whole point is, uh, I believe we should be paying very close attention. And always be ready and watching, uh, which is supposed to be our posture every day, but I think it's especially true uh, for the Feast of Trumpets. Alright, what I want to do this morning is, even though the Bible doesn't tell us exactly... Um, what it is we're memorializing or anything like that. It doesn't give us any more details about Yom Terah. Uh, we do have an example of um, a sermon given uh, on Yom Terah. And it's found in the book of Nehemiah. And uh, so that's what we're going to read today. We're going to read Nehemiah chapter 8. This message that's given to uh, the people of Israel. You know, they've returned from exile basically. And it's Ezra uh, and um, Nehemiah uh, are giving this uh, these thoughts to the people. And so let's dig into that and see if anything speaks to our hearts today. Nehemiah chapter 8, I'm reading from the King James Bible. Verse 1, and it says, And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women. 
and all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. All right, so here's kind of a clue. Leviticus says that we are to memorialize and have a Sabbath on the first day of the seventh month. We remembered that God shouted that there was the trumpet blast and the commandments were given, the law was given back in Exodus chapter 19. And here's what Ezra's doing. Ezra's bringing the law out before the congregation to read it to them on Yom Terah. So it's just another connection back to we're memorializing that day that the law was given, that it was shouted down from God and the trumpet blast. And here we have the people, they haven't heard the law in who knows how long. They've been in exile, all that stuff, Babylonian exile. And here, you know, they come to Ezra the scribe, which there's some interesting things. We need to finish our study in the book of Second Ezra because there's some interesting thing about uh, the scribing that was done by Ezra found in that apocryphal book. Maybe we'll get to that this week. Um, but, so Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding upon the first day in the seventh month. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday, before the men and the women. And those that could understand and the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. You see, I do this podcast, friends, and I read the scriptures for 20 or 30 minutes. And, uh, You know, I wonder if these were an hour and a half or two hours of scripture, how many people would actually be interested in listening. This is the craving that people should have for the word. Ezra is reading here at the water gate from morning until the midday, many hours. And it says here that men and women, anybody who could understand, anybody who had ears to hear, were attentive and they're listening to the book of the law. You know, most people are sitting in their churches and they're looking at their watches. Oh man, is this 20 minute sermon over? Football's on. Man, we've got to really change our posture, our mindset. Verse 4 And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood which they had made for the purpose, and beside him stood Matith Ha'a, and Shema, and Ani'i'ah, and Yor'ara and Hilakah, and Maasiah, and on his right hand, on his left hand, Pediah, and Mishael, and Malchah, and Huzhum, and Hashbadana, and Zechariah, and Mesh Yulam. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened it, the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with lifting up their hands, and they bowed their heads, and they worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Again, look at the posture of the people, so hungry for the Lord, so hungry for the word. Also, Jeshua, and Bani, and Sherbiah, and Jamin, and Akub, and Shabatha, and Hadajah, and Messiah, and Kelta, Azariah, Josabad, Hanan, Piliah, and the Levites caused the people to understand the law. And the people stood in their place. So they read in the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. So what we have here is the reading of the law and then teaching. So they're reading the law and they're teaching alongside that and teaching the people what the law of God says. Verse 9, And Nehemiah, which is in Tershatha, and Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. You see, the word of God convicts, friends. This is why I wish the churches would spend more time teaching the actual word of God. The Word of God convicts. It's a mirror. It shows you yourself. And the people 
They heard the law, they realized that they hadn't been living it properly, and so they're weeping and crying. And Ezra says, look, this day is holy unto Yahovah your Elohim. Mourn not, don't weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said unto them, go your way, eat fat and drink the sweet. And send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is a holy is holy unto your Lord. Neither be ye sorrow, sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So this is the attitude that that the people are being told to take on this day, on the seventh month, on the first day, Yom Terah, the day of shouting, the day of trumpets. What should be our posture? It's not a day for weeping and mourning. It's a day of joy. And it should be a day of joy because it could be when we hear, it could be the day that we hear that trumpet blast again. And here's what he's saying. He's saying, go eat fat. You know, go eat, go eat, you know, fat food. Go drink sweet drinks. You know, go drink milkshakes. Essentially. Send portions unto them who have nothing. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be you sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites stilled all the people, saying, Hold your peace, for the day is holy. Neither be ye grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and to drink and to send portions and to make great mirth, because they had understood the words the Lord, that, the, that were declared unto them. Why were they so happy? Because they had understood the words. What are the, the words of the Lord, the law? Let's go ahead and finish this chapter. Verse 13, And on the second day were gathered together the chief of the fathers of all the people, the priests and the Levites, and the Ezra the scribe, even to understand the words of the law. And they found written in the law which the Lord had commanded by Moses that the children of Israel shall dwell in booths in the feast of the seventh month, and that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go forth unto the mount and fetch olive branches and pine branches and myrtle branches, myrtle branches and palm branches and branches of tri thick trees to make booths as it is written. So the people went forth and brought them and made themselves booths, every one upon the roof of his house and in their courts and in the courts of the house of God and in the street of the water gate and in the street of the gate of Ephraim. And all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity made booths and sat under the booths. For since the days of Jeshua, the son of Nun, unto the day that had not the children of Israel done so. And there was very great gladness. Also day by day, from the first day unto the last, he read in the book of the law of God, and they kept the feast seven days. And then on the eighth day was solemn assembly according unto the manner. So see, they had forgotten all that was commanded to them. And they heard the law, and they realized, hey, we're also supposed to do this thing where we make booths. And of course, I've done a podcast on that feast already. And when it comes up here before long, we'll, we'll rebroadcast that one. Um, that's also one of the few feasts where that's commanded that we will obey, that we need to obey that even in the Millennial Kingdom, the, the Feast of Booths. Um, we're actually reading... This has not got anything to do with um, uh, with Yom Terah, but uh, let me see if I can find this real quick. Um, if I can't, then we won't worry about it. But this is the last chapter of Zechariah, which we are currently studying. Uh, here we go. I'm almost there. Oh, it says, and this is in the book of Zechariah. Uh, last chapter, chapter 14 through four, ch chapter 14, verse 16 through 21, and it says, And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem, so this is, this is at the end here, shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, to keep the feast of tabernacles, which is the feast of booths. It's this idea of your uh, dwelling with God. And it shall be that those who will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king... The Lord of hosts, even upon them, shall be no rain. And at the family of Egypt, go not up and come not. That have no rain, there shall be a plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. 
This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. In that day shall there be upon the bells of horses holiness unto the Lord, and the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Ye, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts, and all that shall sacrifice shall come and take of them, and see it therein. And in that day there shall be no more Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. So the book of Zechariah, it's talking about after the destruction of the nations, when the Lord returns, uh, that there will be a requirement during this time when he's ruling and reigning, that all the nations of the earth have to come up to worship the Lord uh, during the Feast of Tabernacles. So very, very interesting. And again, uh, that podcast is in the archive somewhere where I talk about the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, but I'm only bringing that up now because, you know, the people, their laws being read to them on Yom Terah. And, uh, and they're saying, oh man, here, we're supposed to be doing this too. And, and so forth and so on. So, uh, something I recommend that you do for yourself uh, come Monday night, uh, Tuesday sometime, you know, sometime during that period, time period, is maybe sit down and read, uh, read some of the law. Um, and also read, uh, First Thessalonians chapter four, dealing with, uh, when the, when you hear the shout and the dead in Christ that are raised and followed by those who remain, because that's current, that's the trumpet blast that we are hoping for. And waiting on now. And I believe that will be the next fulfillment of this great feast. Could I be wrong? Absolutely. Someone also came to the comments and said, uh, uh, you know, it's possible that we're off on timing. That maybe it's next month. And uh, I'm completely aware of that too. Uh, That with the calendars could be wrong, that we may not have it all figured out. But what we do know, we can tell by the season, that we're at least approaching the fall season. And so what we have to do is we just have to watch, you know, we just have to be ready. Uh, But the point of the celebration is to memorialize, to be thinking about these things, right? To be thinking about these things, to be trying to understand these things, to be studying these things. And our posture every day should be to wait and be watching because like Jesus said, I come at a time that you think not. I come, you know, when you do not expect uh, and he warns over and over to, to be ready, to be watching. And we want to be like those wise virgins, not the foolish ones. In the parable, you know, there was a shout at midnight. And five, the five wise were ready, prepared, ready to go in. Five foolish ones were not ready. They did not have any oil in their lamp. And so by the end of that parable, they're knocking on the door. Adonai, Adonai, let us in. And he says, that, I tell you, I do not know you. So we need to be ready at all times to hear that trumpet blast because it could be right now could be right now all right well that is the podcast and i pray in the powerful name of jesus that it has blessed you and i hope you've enjoyed uh, us revisiting this uh, i did this uh, yom Terra and feast of trumpets and, and this study and uh, hopefully it's blessed you. You can go to the website, scriptureandprophecy.com, www.scriptureandprophecy.com, and that's where you will find the archives. That's where you also go to support this work, uh, which I happen to think is very, very important uh, because they're, like I, I say this almost every episode now, but it's because it's so true. There's a famine in the land, not a famine of food and water, but, of a, but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. And so that's why I think broadcasts like this one are so important and I need your support. Peace and grace be with all of you. Until next time, God bless.